We want to thank you for coming, and I'm going to grant you two wishes, and I already know what those wishes are. You said, Todd, it's Sunday. It's Sunday afternoon. I've had my lunch. I'm feeling good. I wish there was more Keith in my life. Well, they've got him right here. second wish. Your second wish is, you know what? I like Keith, but I also need something else on my plate in the form of a genie. She's right here. Hey! Female energy. <laughs> and then there's me. Hi. <laughs> Thank you all for coming and being here. How many times have you been to Kawakan? If you say more than two, I'm going to look at you side eye. I thought this was the 50th year, you said. I know, but it's only been allowed for humans for the past two. Um, That's right. The other 48, don't ask. Um, how many people have never been to Kawakan before? Very cool. How many people are OGs you were here last time? Did it take place in the same place last time? No. Where was it last time? North Conference Center. The what conference center? Oh, Norris! I thought you said the, the Norris Conference Center. I like that there's a discrepancy in the numbers, by the way, in that little survey you did. Yeah. There weren't enough people to total everyone in the ones that it's their second year and the ones that it's their first year. It just didn't add up. How the many people are, look at math and go, ooh, I'm not good at that? There's the answer. That's, that's the exact number. There you go. Okay, that explains it all. Thank you. Better bad at math than a room full of liars. <laughs> that's true. I love, it. Deal with liars. I love all these people, fantastic people. <laughs> Keep it coming. Um, it's good to be here. We don't often get to hang out uh, in person so, uh, unless we're passing each other in sessions or on panels. So this is fun for me because I don't often get to hang out with Keith. Jeannie, I, I've never done a panel with you. This is, this is uh, great fun for me. I don't know a whole lot I find about either of you, really, because Keith, whenever we pass in, in the halls or we're working on sessions, it's about you know, doing the gig and that's it, and we, we have pleasantries, but like, I don't, we don't know a whole lot about each other, so this is always very enlightening for me, and so I often tend to ask a lot of questions of you because I want to know so much about you both. Is that okay? Aww, that's so sweet. Well, Bring and, on. And, and just my nerdy curiosity. Uh, Jeannie, so for example, you know, I know what a lot of people always end up asking is like, how did you get started? But I wanted to ask, as a little uh, aside to that question, when you got started, did you, was there, where was the point in your career where it clicked and you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do for, for the rest of my natural life? Was there a point where it hit and you're like, okay, now it feels right? Yeah, so I'm I am a very boring type A personality person. I don't do anything without like plan B, another backup plan, a little nest egg of savings, everything. So when I first moved out to try voice acting, I had my little like savings from doing a regular job and I told myself I'm gonna give it five years. Five years, and if I don't have any traction or anything, then that door is closed, I'm gonna find another door. Um, two years in is when I started getting traction. And as much as I loved teaching voice and piano, I didn't have time for it because the voice acting was just taking too much time. And that's funner anyways than trying to get a kid to be like, all right, the piano is this way, face this way. <laughs> so then I was like, I'll make this my full time. And then I, that was in Dallas. And then there's always like a ceiling in Dallas. There's only so much work. But LA, there kind of isn't a ceiling because they're always making new stuff and it's always like, new media and all that stuff. So then I moved out to LA and I told my husband when I met him, I said, if you're wanting to move somewhere else, don't date me because LA is like end goal. Yeah. Bought so, a home there to stay. Is there a song on the piano that if you never played it again, you'd be happy? For a lease. <laughs> Do you know that? Na, 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 na. I don't need to hear that song. I don't need to see a little kid trying to force their way through it. Well, I'm sorry to say, bring out the piano! <laughs> so, Keith, for you, if there is a role, you've done so many things, you've done so many roles, you're the voice strangely in my head before I even met you, somehow. What is the role that you get approached about the most? Like, when you're at a family function, they're like, Keith, honey, son, do the voice. Is there a role? It's not even, well, if it's a family function, it's probably Hawk Moth. We have enough kids in the family, so it's probably miraculous related. Um, but I, what's 
been fun about my career is it, it, it does change over time and it depends where I go. So I go to cons and it's the Hisoka is the most popular one, or some cons, Chung Li is the most popular. So I kind of like that. Did you say that. Chung Li? Chung Li. Chung Li. Oh. From, uh, yeah, Street Fighter, you, okay. you, you didn't know? Okay. You didn't know? Proceed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chung Li. Okay, oh, oh Zhang Li. Zhang. 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 Crystal clear. Okay, and so yeah, so you get, so... It's with a Z. But you're not supposed to, it's more like a J-ish sound, I'm told. So a variety of characters. Is there one character that, that when you went in to voice it in your head, because, you know, we're always told, believe in yourself, have confidence in yourself, etc. But we all have fears and things like that. When you're in the booth, did you say, oh man, I don't know if I'm right for this role. Did you ever, have you ever felt that or you're like, nope, I'm owning it, here we go. I, I don't think there's room to think that. Like, that only would happen when you're thrown a character. Right, because if you already auditioned for it, you know what you're going in for. So it's when they go, okay, we've got something for you. I'm glad you're here. Here's this character you're playing. I don't think mentally I can allow that in there. If really? they just, well, what am I going to say? So if you're in the session and somebody's like, can you do this, like, no, no, no. A, a voice not, for this character? I see what you're saying. If they throw something at me that I know I can't do, yeah. that's a different situation. But there's never been a character that they've been like, hey, um, we've got this for you and they're planning it for me that I'm not going to give a shot to. But if they say, hey, just... You know, can you do this weird dialect by any chance? Can if you I can't do the do voice it? of a twelve-year-old girl? Um, then I would go, uh, yes. yes I can. <laughs> I'd be very excited to do so. Thank you. And so then, when so then when a game like Genshin comes along, because you both had already been doing, uh, you know, your things out in the wild and voicing and, and all of the fun stuff in a variety of mediums, um, I think a question that that I get sometimes at panels too is like, did you know it was going to be? X hit, or this big, or uh, do, you, do you get a vibe about something like that, or is it like, you know what, you just ride the wave and, and it's a nice surprise if it hits, and we'll see. Yeah, one of the uh, first shows I ever worked on, uh, the creator slash director of it was incredibly excited about it. Kept saying, this is gonna be huge, I produced Voltron, this is gonna be insane, this is gonna be an incredible thing. It had a huge, just an incredible cast. I was just like, I can't believe I'm just getting started out. Like, I'm working with all these amazing people. And, um, and we recorded uh, 13 episodes or something. And that game was Z-Force. No, you guys Give it up for Z-Force! You, you guys don't know what that is because it never came out. Uh, it never existed. There was a G-Force, but not a Z-Force. G-Force also had Nicolas Cage in it voicing the mole. That was the movie with the, the gerbils. Is that true? Yeah, remember, remember G-Force? Nicholas Cage is the mole. You're welcome, bring out the piano! Um, so, so I learned very quickly in my career that like, you can't base it on anything like that. Because nobody, if, you, if we could plan hit games, hit shows, they would, why wouldn't they all be hit shows and hit games, right? That's just the way that it would work. Everything would be huge. So I go into it just for a gig. I'm happy, I'm gonna do my 120%, whatever I'm gonna put in, but I assume I'm gonna work today and we're done. That's it. And uh, maybe they'll call me back next month for more. Maybe they won't. Maybe the game flops. Maybe it never happens. Uh, maybe I get cut. That's just, I've learned over time, that's the way it goes. So when it hits, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. And I think I, I've been lucky to have a, a few of those, but I mean, it's, it's rare that it is huge. Most games, for example, games, for example, three, they come out in three months, nobody ever talks about them again. I think, that's, that's where I look at it. Most games, two, three months, people are excited, and then it's like done. So anything that lasts, it's just, it's an incredible blessing. And the, and the best part of that is you guys. When we go to cons and stuff and you're like, oh my God, I love this game or I love this show. It changed my life in this way or that way. Or I met these friends because of this. That's amazing. And I never had that expectation. And I'm always very grateful when it does happen. And half the time we're like, really? Oh, cool. <laughs> so when you, when you, that. so with Genshin, because when we were doing Genshin, they said, we're going to work on this game for at least five years. That was told to me in the first session. So I was like, oh, okay, so you've got grand plans for it. And it makes sense, because mobile games are so huge uh, all over the world. It's a gigantic industry. Now, what's interesting is, how many people play mobile games here? See? How many of you are playing a mobile game right now? <laughs> I knew there were a few. Okay, right, right on. Be true yourselves, cool. it's good. 
So is there, so Jeannie, for you, is there any project that you've gone into where it just, it hit a little differently? And maybe you didn't know if it was gonna, I mean, you didn't know because you can't tell the future unless there's something I'm missing. I didn't see it in your Wikipedia. But if there's something that you can, you can tell it, it's gonna hit differently because of the team involved or, or the director or the writing that is like, well, this is a special game. So I've been on both sides of the spectrum. Genshin Impact, I actually, my character, Kujasara, came out after the game was already big. So when I got that role, um, and they did not audition me for it. It was because I had done Byleth, and they're like, we know you could hit that voice print, so we want a Byleth in that range. So they just cast me for it, and they let me know, it's already a massive game, so we, hush, hush. Um, so that one, I kind of already knew, like, oh, it already has a fan following. But I've been on the other side. I actually worked mocap, uh, motion capture on a AAA game for like two years of my life being flown out on like a private jet to do this game. I was the only voiceover person. Everybody else was on camera on the project. So I was like, oh shit, this is gonna change my life. After we did all the mocap, all the voiceover, everything, the entire project gets scrapped. No one will ever see, that game will never see the light of day, so. Was it called Z-Force? <laughs> It actually, like, they came out, like, articles of, like, this game studio was working on this game, but then it got scrapped, and I'm like, so can I mention I even did that? I don't know. <laughs> um, so I've been on both sides. So people always give promises, and promises are great, but the paycheck home is, like, that's what I can live off of. I can't really pay rent with a promise. Well, how were the snacks on the private jet? Oh, my God. That was a sweet get. At least, like, the project didn't come out, but at least, like, I got to have a lot of fun on set with the actors. We had, like, they took care of us, so I was like, at least I got to enjoy, like, oh, this is how the other half lives. And then I went back to my, like, yeah. regular home, and I was like, all right, back to the regular schedule. Well, what I read, and this could be wrong, but, like, every fifth private jet flight, they let you fly. That's what I read somewhere. I don't know if that's true. I haven't verified it. I'll look on Snopes later, but... Could uh, be. They are just as bumpy. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. And so, for what, what's the most obscure character that, uh, speaking of going to conventions and meeting folks that all have different tastes and loves of the things that you're a part of, that we're all lucky to be a part of, is there a character that is like an obscure one that like catches you off guard sometimes? You're like, oh, you, you, you knew I did that Imodium commercial. Nice. Like, is there some... <laughs> Character. Said stomach diarrhea. How many remember that? Keith Silverstein right here, voice of San Antonio. Um, is there a character that pops up where you're like, wow, I, even I forgot about that. Oh, nice. This convention, I've been signing a lot of sputter stuff from Fire Force. And I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you guys. Guess what I say for that character? Sputter. It's just one word, just over the sputter, 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 sputter. sputter, sputter. Fire Force. Fire Force. All right, well, in Pokemon, that makes sense. There's a lot of characters that just say the same thing. It's kind of like the Pokemon yeah. thing, or like Bug Snacks thing, where they're just saying their name over again. And thank you guys to everyone who's having me sign, like, Sputter stuff. I was not expecting that. All right, so Sputter, and then Keith? Um, he, well, people are always coming up with something that sometimes I, I feel like I have to check online myself, because I'm like, I don't even know what that is. I have no idea. Uh, so those are the most obscure ones, because you're like, that's from like how, 10, 12 years ago? It was one session. But the ones that surprise me that people bring up, because I never thought people would bring them up uh, after having done them, was uh, uh, Skyrim Nazim. Never thought anybody was gonna, like when I did that, I never thought, like people are gonna be coming up to me forever going like, do you get to the cloud district very often? Like I didn't think that was gonna happen. So I'm like, what? So that's surprising. Uh, another one, because I didn't spend a lot of time with him, but he's huge, is Danganronpa M Mondo Awada. Like, I did not realize. Uh, I didn't know it had such a fan base at the time, um, but it's great. Now it's like, you know, again, it's like 15 years later, and I still get, every time I'm at a con, people want, to, want me to sign something for Mondo. Um, if you're a rompin' romper, raise your hand. Yeah, nice. There okay. We go. Um, and uh, an interesting one is uh, Ziggy the Rapping Zebrasaurus from, from Sesame Street. It's a weird one when people bring that up. I'm like, oh, okay, you, 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 all right. Well, what's funny about that, Keith, is my last tattoo was... No, I didn't. I did. Son of a gun! That's him! Who did this? It's perfect! Why did I turn and I orchestrated it? all of Kawakan to bring it to this moment with the tattoo reveal. It was you worth are it. so good. It's like you planned everything, my it's friend. Thing. <laughs> so good. So good. What's your answer? Yeah. What's uh, your well, you know what? It it happened today. It it so uh, there was. I don't know if y'all were in line, but there's someone. Uh, her handle is 
Tiny July, I think it's like Tiny Dot July or maybe just Tiny July, she is a big fan of Initial D. And so she actually has the car from Initial D and she, she bought a Subaru, work, restored it herself, and has driven around to conventions to get the main cast to sign it. And then I was one of the last two singers. The other singer she, signature she needs is Kent Williams, who was in the show. But she pulled it up out front. Oh, not like a model car? Oh, like an actual... car. Oh, yeah. Oh and then we came in the line and then said, will you go sign this car? And then we went out front. I looked at the car, signed it. I said, wow, cool. It's, it, I mean, it was awesome, immaculate. And I said, the, okay, let me see what the keys look like. Awesome. And I go, you stay right there. And I got in, I drove off, and I parked it somewhere where she's not going to find it. <laughs> so um, you'll just have to see if she finds it by following her on Instagram. But uh, that character is one that, that was obscure. Uh, another obscure one, um, I would say, is, uh, gosh, what's maybe like... I don't know, like, that one's pretty, that one's probably the most consistently obscure one, I'd say. But then does it make it obscure if it's consistent? I don't think so at that point. <laughs> Bottom it's line debatable. is, the car's hidden. <laughs> and none of you are going to find it. Again, follow her Insta. But, uh, but yeah, so, so as you can see, like, we, 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 they've all voiced a lot of characters, from Sputter to a zebra and everything in between. And I bet that you all have a couple of questions for them. And I'll bet that there is a mic waiting for you right here. And I'll bet if you get in a line behind that mic, we'll take your question one at a time. Come on up! You know, Todd, I've been meaning to talk to you about your gambling problem. And now seems like a good time. <laughs> no, no, bet it all on Brett! This is actually an intervention. Thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs> I appreciate this. Before, you're gambling too much. <laughs> before you ask your question, yes, say your name, but say what house you're in. Or if you have a house preference. Yeah. So pop on up to this mic right here. Right here. Well, I thought you were going very far. Come on up if you've got a question. Don't be afraid. And if you're afraid, that's okay. Bring that chicken fried chicken, Kentucky fried chicken basket. Come on up to this right here. And also, just so you know, the mic is adjustable. So you can pull it down. You can pull it up. You can raise it lower. Don't, don't feel like you need to be a slave to the mic. The mic is a slave to you. Bad mic, you're a slave, mic. Okay, um, all right, let's start off with the first question. Tell us who you are and where you're from. Um, um, I'm, my name's Lauren, and well, I'm from San Antonio. My Did you say you're from Cancun? <laughs> no, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I'm from San Antonio. You're from San Antonio, I was way off. I was just there. Okay, <laughs> what's, your, what's your pregunta? My question is, can I give you all a sticker? Can you give us all stickers? I'll take a sticker. I think so, unless this is some weird trick question. I was no, no, it's, it's, it's a KFC sticker. Let's see these stickers. Yeah. I've got, I've got, I've got three styles. You've Look got three, that. yeah, you've got oh, three. I choose a style. This one has Mr. K, has Mr. Colonel Sanders on it, looking 95. It's a, it's a Kauai Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Cruelty. I want the Colonel Sanders one. I'd right off the bat. Right? This is beautiful. I just want to kind of look at that. You want to look at that? Is that one? For, is I'm that taking it? Husbando Sanders. This yeah. is the sexiest Colonel Sanders I've ever seen. I like this one because it's a magic card. Kentucky okay. Fried Chicken. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to put it next to my uh, tattoo, my zebra tattoo. Thank you. Thank you. My, do you know how good looking this Colonel Sanders? This is the Colonel Sanders I would say to you, like, we can have chicken later. <laughs> That Colonel Sanders doesn't eat chicken. Look at that. He doesn't eat fried chicken. We'll, we'll get to the chicken, Colonel. I promise. But right now. What, what's your name? My name is Rafael. What was the first anime you ever watched? One Piece. One Piece? One Piece. Right nice. And you're still watching it. There's only 10,000 episodes. <laughs> I got right behind. Right on. I got, still got my five dollars to go. Right on. What's your question? My question is, how ancient you card plays are your character? Have I, say, say it one more time. How do you card plays? Have I cosplayed? As your character in Genshin Impact. Oh. Uh, oh, have you cosplayed as your characters from Genshin Impact? I wish I could, because I'm like, uh, I mean, I'm staring at the outfit right now. I'm obsessed with Kujo Sara's outfit. I love that. <laughs> The best I can do is like hold up like a black leaf or something. <laughs> I, I cosplayed a one of my characters one time at BlizzCon. I was Torg, ready to learn. 
you know and I had a full cosplay made, the whole deal. And it was fun, and I did it the first day, and I didn't tell anybody. And uh, even in their official promo, like reel for like, here's the cosplayers for this year, whatever it is, 2017 or whatever it was, I'm in there, they didn't even know it was me. <laughs> professional photographers were like, hey man, dude, say something to your characters. And I, you know, and I was like, come get your armor. And he was like, uh, th that's really, really good. <laughs> you know what he did? They didn't know, it was pretty, it was pretty great. Do you know what you, you copied that time? Say the one more time. What year did you copy that time? Uh, what year? I, I, it was pretty, like maybe 2017, 2018. So if you look at like 2018, you know, BlizzCon cosplayers, you can see the official video. I'm definitely in there. Yeah, I mean, not when you know it, you won't miss me. You're gonna be like, how did people not know? But the only a few people I talked to for a little while would look at me and then go, and I go, shh, shh, and they walk away. <laughs> walk away. I'm going, I'm going, bye. Shh. But for me, cosplay, I, I've, I've cosplayed a few times, never as Razor. Um, for me, I, uh, I'm, I'm intimidated by cosplay because I have a perfectionist attitude about it. And I'm like, if it's not perfect, I don't want to do it. Um, and that's a self-defeating attitude, of course, that I need to work on uh, with my team of therapists when I get back home, of course. <laughs> we'll talk about it. But um, I haven't done it yet, but now thank you for making me feel bad about not cosplaying as Razor. And, but you've given me fodder for my therapy session on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, next question here. Hello, I know what you're cosplaying as, and that was actually my last cosplay was as Alan Walker in New Orleans. What's your name? I'm Raylan, and I'm a Gryffindor. Yay. Nice. What was the uh, what's the longest uh, watch watching of anime consecutively that you've done in your lifetime? I watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood in one session, which took about thirty six hours. Thir did you say thirty six hours? Yes. So what were you sitting on as you watched the couch? Yes. Did you did you merge with the couch? <laughs> Yes. So you are part couch. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Impressive. What's your question? Have you ever gotten called back after a long period of time for a character and been surprised by it? Have you been surprised by a long callback that, that came from a distance? You didn't know what it was, and as the dust settled, it was like, I remember auditioning for that. Keith! We want you to work on our game you auditioned four years ago! <laughs> It's the Colonel Sanders game! Get working with this guy! Sign me up! I don't even need the chicken! No, that happens every once in a while. You get, uh, and they usually are, they, you know, put, like, when you get, it's usually an email, and they, they'll tell you, like, I don't know if you remember this, but, you know, nine months ago you auditioned for this, and we'd love to use you in, I'm still waiting for some of my early, like, 2001 auditions, but uh, I think, I still got some hope there. Come on! Yeah. What about you, Jeannie? Uh, yeah, Vex for League of Legends um, took forever because they wanted to have like an exact voice and so I had like auditioned like two times and then a long time went by and then we came back and they're like, we want you to come in just to play around like workshop voices with us to find a voice for Vex. Um, so that was a long, and I was like, I don't know if this is going to happen or not. I, I, and it finally happened. Yeah. See, so <clears throat> tell, tell us your name one more time. Raylan. Raylan. Like that is much cooler than talk. Um, so with with the voiceover world, I find that it is quite different from the on camera world, having been in both worlds. Um, in the on camera world, you he, you read a lot about the the romanticizing of the pre production, where it's like we sit down and we had coffee and we discussed the script and we talked about character and we did costume fittings and found the right fit for us together. In VO, it's like, hey, are you free Tuesday? Yeah, we're going to record Genshin for 15 minutes. Does that sound good? Okay, well, we'll see you there. Oh, but, uh, oh, but I, can, I have something else there. Can we move it? Yeah, we can move it two minutes. That's about as romantic as it gets in the voiceover world. There's no, it's very much like a, um, it's very much like a factory uh, from that aspect. The magic happens because you don't see that. You just see the magic trick, and that's what we love. We love it when you see the finished, polished version of it. All the stuff in the emails and the back and forth and stuff like that, that's just for us to cry about, uh, you know, in, into and our, our coffee. Yeah. To cry and our ages <laughs> to cry about. So we want you to see the magic. But other than that, it's, it's, it's like a, it's the equivalent, it's as unfun as practicing guitar or piano minute after minute. But when you get that nice for a lease solo, 
at the, at the 15 minute mark in that song. And it, you know that part when the theremin goes and then the guitar solo kicks in and the, the drums are real cool at that part? Um, that's what you wait for. But yeah, thank you. You were right, you said you'd be back. Hi, Todd. What's your question? Hit us um, with it. Okay, I actually have a question. Well, I just want to say to Keith, thank you for being in one of my favorite video games, Stella Glow as Dante. I did it for you. Yeah. And I have a question each for Jeannie and then one for you, but a little request for you, Todd. Can you still do Coconut's voice and say, quit, quit trying to be like Bruce Lee and swinging those kashis around like nunchucks? Listen, would you quit trying to be like Bruce Lee and swinging that dogashi kashi around like nunchucks? <laughs> Okay, my first question for Jeannie is, what, what was it like playing the role of Psycho and Telly on My Hero Academia and doing that scene where you battled 1A and freezing them to death? It was short and sweet. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, my hero. Oh my gosh, I think my hero. Everybody loves my hero. And then it was just like, oh, well, that was quick. Okay, <laughs> she's dead. We're done. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> um, so it was nice. <laughs> okay. And what yeah. was it like for you to watch My Hero? I love My Hero, especially I think she relates to Principal Nezu. Well, that is 90% of what matters most. The other 10% is, can we get to the gig and do it okay? All right, good. Um, thank you for watching. And what was your last question? My next question is for you, Todd. Um, since I know before, when I used to watch, when I first started watching anime, two of my favorites with you in it was Rosario Vampire and My Bride is a Mermaid. So how exciting was it to work with Alexis Tipton and Jeremy in both those shows? Well, uh, when you mention Alexis Tipton and you mention Jeremy, uh, those are delightful people that, I, that it is criminal that we don't get to join forces more. Um, but you know what? Everybody's doing their own adventures. Alexis is directing and working on things. Jeremy's working on things. I'm directing and working on things. So it's fun when the universes come together and we get to work together on something and, and, and share in that energy with each other. Uh, and then when we don't, it just makes me uh, miss the times and the great times that we had. And so it works out both ways. So I'm hoping that something brings us together in the future. Um, I, I do have a quick spoiler for you. Do you guys want to see a little clip of the 100 year quest? Yes. Yeah. You want to see a little fairy tale clip, an yeah. early clip? Yeah. Me too. Um, but thank you for your question. <laughs> Anyway, thank, you, thank you, and I hope there's a. I hope that Rosario Vampire gets picked up for maybe another season or so. I, you know what, all the shows. I, 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 I'm down for a thousand episodes. I want the One Piece treatment for every show we work on. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, especially that Colonel Sanders one. Have you heard about that show? It's gonna be good. There's a game first, and then it's a show. Hi, I'm Abby. I'm a Byla, dressed as Byla from the Fire Emblem <laughs> uh, Blue Wine Sauce, by the way. Um, I was gonna ask if you had to spend the entire day with any character that you voiced, which character and why? Katarina Clays. She has so many different personalities. It's like hanging out with like six people instead of just one. And yeah, we can make like a little party out of it and have like a bunch of sweets because we both have sweets. I'd have a girl's day with her. Lord, if I was gonna hang out, well, it's not gonna be Hisoka, that's wrong. <laughs> I mean, it would be fun for a little bit, and then it'd be weird, and I might be decapitated or something, and my arms turn to flower petals, so no. Worth it, though? Maybe. Might be. I don't know. That'd be a weird way to go out, I'll tell you that. Um, and Hawk Moth? No, no, no. I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, maybe Torbjorn. I might hang out with Torbjorn. He could, he could teach me some stuff. I'm not uh, so mechanically inclined, and he very much is, so... I would, I would hang with it. Tool time with Torbjorn. That's what I would do. There's a, I made a, we, I did a movie with Laura Bailey years ago, and I would hang out with that demon-y character because he's dead, and then he doesn't take up, I got a lot to do in a day. So if he's dead, I don't have to, like, he could be there, rotting. And you, just, you just hang out with a corpse? Decomposing, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, just sitting there quietly so I can do my other stuff. That's like a regular Tuesday for him. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging with a corpse. But it's not bad because it's my corpse. Is that weird? You, you might want to talk to your therapist about that. That's, that's, that's Sunday. Yeah, yeah. But thank you. I feel like this intervention is working backwards. You have more and more issues as we continue. You're supposed to lessen your issues. But listen, how many issues does Spider-Man have? They just hit issue 1,000 and y'all are loving it. Stop with this what. We gotta talk about your what about ism also. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. 
Hello. Hello. Tell us your name. My name's uh, Taylor, and I wanted to uh, two things. Um, one first, I wanted to ask, what was the hardest voice y'all have voiced for? What's the hardest, the hardest voice you've voice ever had to voice? I did Call of Duty, and that was just yelling, yelling. They wouldn't normally like if you have a lot of lines, they'll book you for four hours. That's the longest, but for Call of Duty, they only book you for two because they know how vocally stressful it is. Um, but I was happy because um, my character was Spanish, and I'm Hispanic. Um, so I was taking pictures, which you're not supposed to, but I was like, can I just take this one picture of just a script of just curse words in Spanish? And I sent it to my mom, and I was like, I get paid to scream this. <laughs> But it was, it was hard. At the end of the day, I'm just like, all right, I'm not going to talk for the rest of the day. <laughs> uh, I have two answers for that, actually, because um, there's vocally stressful, like you were talking about, and then there's just a difficult character to play. Yeah. Um, so I played uh, Johan Lieber in a series called Monster. He's like a sociopath, and uh, he lives in a dark, bad place. And I'm very naturally, if you've worked with me, like I like to joke around between takes and, and just have fun, whatever, but I realized that I was selling myself and everybody short like I couldn't quite get right back there quickly to that dark place and then keep jumping out of it it just felt like it was cheating I'm not on purpose but I was like no 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 I have to be there not just do the voice but but be in that so like Patrick Seitz was directing and I had to be like okay I'm not mad it hasn't been a bad day but I'm gonna kind of stop talking until break you know in between and we'll just I'm gonna stay focused so that was difficult in that way just because my natural tendency is to jump back to me and so having to live there for a little while was difficult um, and then strangely vocally stressful I've done a lot of war games and a lot of those things where it's screaming. I lucked out in Call of Duty because I play Reaper and he's a robot, so he doesn't scream. I'm like, yes, score. Uh, but strangely, uh, the uh, Fisher Price Little People, I had a session that went way over time where I was doing all the cars and the animals and all the stuff in it, and they weren't, it wasn't that they were super gruff. It was so much and so many and constantly in the background doing stuff. And I was so, I remember coming home and I was so like drained and I mean, it's like anything else, but it was funny because, you know, I do Vector the Crocodile or Torby and all these that are raspy, but this one was just a long session of goofy. And of course, when you watch it, it's like so quiet in the background and you're like, I was almost bleeding <laughs> from my throat. And it's like, you can't even hear that. Oh my God. Wow. So, listen. For me, I worked on uh, these video games uh, called Rage, Rage 1 and, and 2. On Rage 1, um, I, this is kind of my fault in it, uh, because I didn't say I need to take a break. I was just like, it was you know, years ago where, where I feel like a lot of times one of the prerequisites for, there's a couple prerequisites for being a voice actor. One is uh, you're alive, two is uh, you breathe, three is you know how to read, uh, and then four is you are a addicted to people pleasing because you feel like a genie came down from heaven and granted you this ability to pop behind a mic for a second. Not me, not me, different genie. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, different genie. And so when you think about it that way and you have a scarcity complex about voiceover, you want to give a thousand and ten percent to every single thing that you do, even if it means destroying the very thing that allows you to do the thing, right? So I was yelling and screaming and I could feel the iron in my throat coming up and, and I was tasting the iron in my voice, which is, uh, you know, you may know it as blood. And, uh, but I kept going and I lost my voice and I could not even whisper for nine and a half days. Um, because I didn't do good self-care in the booth and I didn't say, hey, I need a break. And so uh, I did ask for a break, but they said no and they gave me a, a choice bit of sign language and locked the door. They didn't do that, um, but uh, I did that. And so I lost my voice, that was crazy. And then when I went and worked on Rage 2 years later, uh, I went into that session and then I said, they go, we're working on this game today. It's called Rage uh, 2. And I was like, oh my gosh, I worked on Rage 1. And I told them that whole story. And, and they were stone-faced. And what I realized is, right before I walked into the room, I didn't know that they had just had a conversation about uh, not wanting people to lose their voice on the, on the project because we just did this big video game negotiation for it. And so what I thought was being like a light antidote, and, uh, anecdote was actually uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> and so it got really weird in the session because I was like, oh yeah, I totally lost my voice for like nine and a half days. Ha <laughs> blood. <laughs> and they're like. Uh, and so it got, it got a little weird. 
And then you know what was extra weird about that? Is when we were recording, um, there were so many lines that we had to do and they were all yelling lines. The very thing that we said we weren't gonna do. And so we were running out of time in the session and they accidentally left the talk bat but button on so I could hear them and they go, just make them get through the lines, we need to finish. And then I, I, heard, I heard the realization that they knew and that I knew what they had said and you heard the button go, <laughs> so like, it was a super weird session, and I lost my voice for a long time. Yeah, um, I had some friends that really wanted to be here. All three of y'all are amazing, but they really like um, Keith. And they, I was wondering if you could do some, say anything, um, kind of starting with um, Zhang Li and maybe melding into Hisoka, if possible. <laughs> Nothing can be accomplished without rules or standards. My, how unusual. It looks like that poor man's arms have turned to flower petals. Hi, uh, I was wondering if it was kind of hard to, especially for Keith, uh, figure out the pronunciation for a lot of things in Liwe, um, <laughs> given that it's Mandarin, and then Jeannie, um, how uh, you felt with doing a lot of uh, words in Japanese just to get that flow right. Uh, that is the one, that is the word, by the way. That is the most difficult one, and I, I remember back from the very first Genshin Impact session, really trying to get that Liu. Liu. It's, you want to go like Liu Wei, Liu Wei, and that's wrong. I'm overdoing it so you can hear how bad, but, but you tr it's hard not to do that a little bit. So I, it's almost like this weird way I actually move my hand when I say it in a way. You'll still see me doing it when I do the line, like I'll subtly do it. Because um, it just helps me to say it right. But even I, I'll still mess it up every now and then. And the interesting thing is, they were so hardcore about it. And in a more recent session, they seem to have loosened up a little bit. I think they gave up a little bit. They were like, some actors are not completely nailing it. So therefore, you know, that's close enough. And it was like, we're, we're, we're good with this. Um, but that, yeah, that's the, that is the, and it's never just that word, by the way. It's always like three other names, two other cities, and that in the same sentence. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then you have to be able to shift and get all those right. So that one's, yeah, difficult. I might be one of the actors that they had to lower the standards on, because literally we'd be like, Shogun. No, Shogun. Sh Shogun. Shogun. Like, it's not Shogun, it's not Shogun. And we just did it so many times, like, I'm saying what you're saying! I don't hear it. It's so hard, it's so crazy. I mean, I don't, Razor doesn't, Razor says like, <laughs> Razor like potato, and then I go, potato. And they go, no, 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 <laughs> potato. And I go, but I'm saying what you're saying, potato. And they go, no, 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 look at me. But I, I, we, I think we've all been in those sessions where, I'll be in a session, not for Genshin, Chris is great, uh, but there's been a session where sometimes you get these directors that get it so set in their head, not even about pronunciation, but about the way they want a scene done, that I've had a director go, watch how I do it. Like, look through the glass and look at me. Watch what I do with my face. You do this with your face. And I'm like, ah, oh, marionette Todd, showing up for duty. Like, um, but yeah, no, the pronunciations, what I like about pronunciations, because they do scare me, sometimes when it's in unfamiliar territory, is that, to me, is what is a beautiful aspect of acting that sometimes I feel like we get away from in the sense that I like a challenge. I like playing in a world that is not comfortable for me and that I am not naturally born into or raised into. Because as actors, I feel like we're little detectives. We take all the little ingredients from the script and all the little clues and we form our hypothesis about this character. And we test out that theory by going through the script and delivering our performance. And so when we get to play these things that aren't us, that are away from us, I feel like we have that opportunity to be little acting detectives. And that's always a fun challenge for me, even if I feel like I'm saying tsunami. And they're like, no, 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 tsunami. I'm literally saying that, tsunami. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's a lot of fun to get those challenges. Now, when they're all on a row like Keith has, which we've all had, uh, we sweat a little bit, you know, we sweat a little bit. But uh, I'll just say, like, keep it rolling. I'm going to say it a couple times. Just let yeah. me get it out. <laughs> Piece it together. I'd but, throw uh, that yeah. one out. <laughs> I had to do this. There was a show called uh, Violetta that I did with, uh, with Keith and Christina V. And I had to sing an entire song in Italian. 
And it wasn't like a ballad, like a slow thing. It, 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 it was like an Ed Sheeran song, but like Italian. Damn, that was hard. We broke it down segment by segment, and then we put it together, but it was, ooh, it hurt. Did you ever have songs on that? You had songs on that. Nah, maybe just like a short something, yeah. nothing, nothing major. I had a lot of just improv, where there would be a whole scene where he's talking in the background, and they would have nothing. They would just oh. write, like, dot, 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 and I'd be like, what am I supposed to do? Oh, it's probably just a quick, it's like four minutes of him talking. <laughs> he's in the background, but you still hear him the whole time, and I'd be like, Okay. When, when, when there's four minutes of Walla that we have to do, four minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but think about a car wreck. Ten seconds can change your life. Now, four minutes. That's hard. It's hard. And you. you got dark And, and that's, that's Walla. It's a four minute car crash. Yeah, but it's awesome. If you get it from a lot of angles, oh, it looks so cool when you're done with it. Don't go and get car wrecks and say, I said it looked cool. I don't need, don't you put that on me, Ricky Bobby. I think you need to talk about that in therapy, too. That's next Monday. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And thank you for what you do. Thank you for being... Actually, thank you for what you do by making the time to come to this convention and cosplay and carving out this only weekend. This is the only weekend that you're going to have for 2023, and you spend it here with us, so thank you. Okay. Now go on with your bad self. I know. I like, that. I like that you thank us for all we do because he just admitted that he stole a car, which we're about to talk about as well. <laughs> but thank you for stealing someone's car. Well, no, but I admitted it in therapy, and you can't. That's that's legal. Thank you for all the gambling. That's legal. <laughs> it's on an app. I use a VPN. Um, okay. I did want to ask if you were to collect anything from any genre that you've done, what would you collect? Ooh, organs. Or oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jeannie. You first. You first. Yeah, like skin. Like there's seven layers of skin. Or fingernails, yeah. teeth, hair. There's so many things you could collect. Oh, you got eyeballs. Eyes. eyes. Eyeballs. What are you doing with your right eye later? I need it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> cars. Like just have a hidden garage full of stolen cars. Really? Yeah. You got room for one more? <laughs> okay. Cars. What about you, Keith? I, I do collect stuff from the things that I'm in. Uh, anything. I like official merch. Anything. So my office is filled with all kinds of little toys and yeah. buttons and trinkets yes. and all kinds of models. I have lots of Gundams. Got, got a number of Sinanjus and just all kinds of stuff. I love it. It's, uh, I'm a collector at heart, so I've limited. It's good because I would probably have way more things if I didn't limit it to like, oh, I'm, this is me. I'll get that. I'm a collector of hearts, so I find people that, that kind of look like the characters I voice and... But no, I gotta save that for the Dateline special, sorry. Uh, uh, no, I collect, uh, toy, like Keith, toys, like if I see a toy of a character I voice, because the thing is, is like, especially nowadays, I feel like with toys, they order so few of them that if you don't get it when you see it, you may never find it again. So toys, but outside of that, I would say, I like to collect outside of the obvious toy of the character. Little things that just remind me of a moment in the session that may be as innocuous as like a, a you know, a kawaii Kentucky Fried Chicken guy. <laughs> you know, like little things that anyone else would look at that and go like, why do you have that kawaii Kentucky Fried Chicken guy? And I go, put that down. <laughs> Eat that chicken. <laughs> you know, I don't know, but yeah, stuff like that. That's amazing. <laughs> well, eating chicken, uh, it depends. If, if you bake it, you steam it, fried's not good for your heart. It's not good for your heart. It's good for your soul. That's right. Be good to your soul, but also be good to that heart, because I need it later. Okay. I see why you're in therapy. <laughs> Just seven days a week, guys. Come on. Okay. We gotta wrap it up. We're gonna do some. How much time are we gonna do? Speed questions. Speed questions. Speed questions. Speed questions. We gotta ask quick. We gotta answer quick, and otherwise we can't get through people. Hello. Hi. Hello. What was your favorite um, line in Genshin Impact? <laughs> That's not very fast, y'all. I have no regrets in meeting you, friend. Should the day ever come that we are not together, you will continue to shine like gold in my memories. <laughs> Jeannie, go. I don't remember the line per se, but when um, Kujo Sara is talking about like her daily activities, and she's like, I wake up at 5 a.m. That's my idea of sleeping in. I was like, oh, hon. <laughs> Sweet, sweet baby child. <laughs> you are Lupacol. 
Thank you. <laughs> Hello! Hit us with your question. Hi there. Um, my question is, do y'all actually play the games that y'all um, that y'all play it? Like, what are your voices in? Like, do y'all play Genshin Impact or Fire Emblem or anything? I wish I could say yes, but I'm so bad at video games. Personally, the best I can do is ask my husband to play it, or I watch um, Let's Plays on YouTube. I'm that kind of gamer. So I've like seen it, and it, like I'll, if I can convince my husband, like, play Last of Us, and then I'll be like, go to the right, go to the right, there's a guy in the background! That's my idea of playing. You're, you're a voyeuristic gamer, that's okay. Yeah, Keith? Um, I used to be a, game, a super gamer, played everything that came out, I loved it. Uh, the more my career has taken off, and of course I'm a family man and all that stuff, the less time I have to play, I put five hours in on Genshin, I know, I'm dope. Um, <laughs> I've played some Overwatch, I'm not great at it, but that's kind of where I am. The only thing I stop for is when I love Tomb Raider, so when Tomb Raider comes out, I will, I will pick that up and I will solve that, for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I don't play the game, I have the games that I'm in. I collect them like my little menagerie of souls. Um, but I play other games because I'm catching up on a backlog of games. I mean, I'm talking about like, listen, uh, Pitfall. Where's your Pitfall? Just catching up on it. No, but I do play Call of Duty and stuff like that. Uh, level 255, Prestige 4, but uh, yeah, you know. But no gold skins. Uh, no, no, I just collect the skins. No, oh, in the game? You mean in the game? Oh yeah, I don't collect skins in the game. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You, you know what I'm talking about. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we got time for, how about these last two? Last two questions. Sounds great, hello. Sorry guys, that's all we got time for. Blue Lions are up, by the way. Uh, has there ever been a character that you've forgotten you voiced until you were approached by a fan about it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I can't name them because I've already I've really forgotten. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Fallon. Uh, I have a one-act competition tomorrow, and I would like to know maybe a tip or two that you have for me to play my character. What's your name, Fallon? My name's Fallon, yes. Proceed with advice, I will formulate <laughs> mine. <laughs> Commit to the bit, especially like if you're doing a one act by yourself and you can feel like once you get on stage, especially with these lights that are so bright right now, um, then you can like freeze, but it, just commit to feeling dumb, commit to feeling stupid, commit to the bit. <laughs> what I would have to add to that. I'm so used to reading off a script and just having it all in front of me. But, but yeah, you, you go, whatever your choice is, make clear, interesting choices, and then you, you, it's true, you have to commit. Otherwise, people go, even if they like it, and they see a little, you're wavering a bit on this character, whatever you've chosen, then they're like, oh, I don't know if they meant to make that choice. Wait a minute, they're slipping out of there. And at least, if you're strong with whatever your choice is, it's like, okay, all right, cool, I like it or I don't, but they, they went for it. Fallon, you said it's a one act play competition? Yes, sir. Okay, so here's, here's my advice to you, having been in your shoes before. <laughs> how long did you rehearse this? Um, I've only had the character for two weeks. I was recently the stage manager. Yeah. I have been in theater for four years. Okay. And um, so I was kind of thrown into the part because the other person got caught with stuff they weren't supposed to have. Okay. So... Uh, a stolen car? <laughs> what, what, what did the cops do? What was their procedure to find that? Anyway, I'll ask about that later. So, Fallon, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You've been rehearsing for two weeks, right? Yes, sir. Did the change of the location of where you're going to perform it change your journey in the script? Um, the answer is no. <laughs> okay, it doesn't change your choices, right? Because you've been rehearsing them, right? You, you've yes, rehearsed sir. with your other team. You've got people there supporting you. You're supporting them, correct? Yes. You have a safety net underneath you called your other actors, your director, and yourself, right? Yes, sir. You've got to trust in that, right? Yes, sir. And then, so it, the, the tricky balance is you got to trust in what you've established, and then you also still need to be listening to everybody else around you, living in the moment, as they call it, right? Yes. And as long as you're going towards your super objective that I know you've already figured out because <laughs> you've been rehearsing it for two weeks, you're going to be just fine. Changing the environment of where you perform it doesn't change how, your journey in the show unless you're performing it on the side of a mountain to some billy goats. <laughs> It means so much coming from you. You're literally my idol, and I have looked up to you for years. <laughs> well, Fallon, I appreciate those kind words. You have a way cooler name than me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Got this. Thank you all for being here. Give a round of applause to Jim.